Welcome back everyone to SuperCloud 4. I'm John Furrier, your host. The topic on this episode is generative AI and it ranges from all impacts from society, government, technology, applications, but also the developers who are making the applications need to have the data. We have a great guest here who's going to comment on this, Chetna Mahajan, Chief Digital Information Officer. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for having me. So we did a big feature story on developer productivity. Paul Gillen had a great story on with you participating. The big, you're at Amplitude, which is in the middle of all the action, cloud yes. scale. So you see yes. the cloud scale and the analytics. Um, and innovation right now is at all time high. Yes. Data is a big part of it, right? And yes. so developers like security and other areas where that's not yes. like their big thing, don't want to attend meetings and have to deal with like the schemas and yes. you know, which data warehouse do they use? So the developer role is going to be big. And you're seeing now with large language models and foundational models, there's an infrastructure developing, but not enough not to use the analogy, picks and shovels yes. available for developers. Yes. This is a big part of it. Huge. Meanwhile, the developer productivity conversation uh -huh. in the cloud native world yes. is still at an all time high. So yep. cloud, cloud native is all about developer productivity. And now with AI as the gift coming in, it's going to be very interesting to see. What's your thoughts? Yes. Yes, I think Gen AI, uh, the two big personas that um, are really leveraging is uh, the students and the engineers. So I think it's a, it's very, very disruptive. Uh, I'm very uh, positive about and think it's just like the next, um, what same disruption as the, uh, what the uh, smartphones and internet brought in. Mm -hmm. I think it's as disruptive and I'm extremely uh, positive about the Gen AI. And for developers, I agree. I think for the longest time, uh, we've always struggled to get the uh, software uh, in time, the time to value. So with Gen AI coming in, there's tons of opportunities for developers and engineers. Their roles are changing. I think a lot of times they can do auto code generation snippets. They can do testing. All the tech debt reduction is um, all time high, I think, uh, with uh, solutions like GitHub Copilot coming in the time to value and putting software functionality, it's gone up really high. And, um, uh, and I believe that this is, uh, this is revolutionary. Uh, although uh, it isn't there, but I still think uh, human oversight is extremely important. Uh, so having um, in what I call responsible AI is very critical for developers to be able to use that. So yes, it's, it's, uh, it's going to increase productivity, efficiency. As I said, it's going to have auto, um, testing, you could do uh, a lot of uh, prototyping ahead of time. So all that work is now going to be shifted to uh, Gen, Gen AI tools so that the developers can really think ahead. They can be the true problem solvers. They can design the solution to what the users need. They can actually think security and design user ex experience uh, as they're developing. The co-pilot piece, well, first of all, we've seen the three waves. Yeah. The chat bots, put that aside, that's clear, that's for the entry level stuff. Yep. The co-pilot or the human assistant has been a big game changer. Yes. And then the third layer we're seeing in the market is this predictive yeah, aspect of the data. So yes. let's so talk about co-piloting or human augmentation. Yes. Heavy lifting that used to be done, that, that can be done with AI, or the advances in data yes. architectures that are coming because now data, feeds AI, if you don't yes. have the data, you can't, you can, but then compute and token limitations are now another factor. So yes. you start to see the early days of, okay, we invented the wheel, we invented fire, yes. we get what it is, now we got to put into action yes. with AI. What are some of the things that you see as use cases for so, developers getting the action here? Prototyping, yeah. code generation? Yes, code generation, prototyping, as I mentioned, are some of the use cases that are already there for engineers and developers. And there are two, uh, some of the use cases, uh, you've already talked about the customer engagement side of the house where chatbot embedding that, we've done that for Amplitude as well, mm -hmm. uh, assisting, um, being the data assist for our yeah. product, uh, we've generated that. So uh, some of the other use cases that are around, um, you know, making sure the data quality is there. Uh, I have seen uh, use cases where uh, developers are using to generate um, synthetic data so they, they can uh, you know really help uh, expedite their testing. Um, I've seen use cases where they are actually um, 
designing a solution through lang natural language. So, you know, as a requirement, you feed in requirements and you, they spit out some kind of a code and then you take it forward from there. So it's, you don't have to do a lot of repetitive, menial kind of work that is, uh, that was traditionally done by developers so they can do the more sophisticated um, user experience kind of roles um, is what I'm seeing. I, so I've been talking on the cube a lot about um, and riffing on my podcast, our podcast with Jay Vellante about there's going to be a creative culture that's going to emerge. Oh, Not that okay. the, there hasn't been a creative class in uh -huh. society. There's always been but in the nerd tech community. Yes, creative has always been. Oh yeah, UI or do this that, and, and or architects are thinking you know thinking differently. But if all the manual labor is going to be taken care of, say code reviews or um, any kind of automation that takes uh -huh. the humans. Um, toil or grunt work or rock fetches, whatever word you want to use, it just makes them more productive. Uh -huh. It gives them more time. Absolutely. With more time, they can focus on things that they like. Yes. This is going to, we think, uh, yeah, a huge explosion of creativity. Huge explosion. And I think also uh, there is going to be a lot of application proliferation because people are going to create. So there's a lot of uh, uh, risks around making sure that there is governance in place, there is infrastructure, all of that. So there's, there's going to be a shift. I don't necessarily think that the work is going to go away, but the shift is going to be more user-centric more uh, data centric mm -hmm. and more, uh, I would believe uh, it'll be security compliance by design. So those are the focus areas now for the engineers because even if they're making commercial software or they're using embedded AI in the existing enterprise application space, uh, I think what will be critical is to uh, enable the business, enable your end customers. So thinking that uh, in those lines will be, uh, I call that um, creative, yes, but I also call it empathetic, lead by empathy. So I say deliver solutions that your users truly need. Um, thinking about um, things that the users may not even know. So when the smartphone came, they didn't know that, we didn't know we needed it. Yeah. And now it's become uh, something that we can't live without. So something similar along those lines is where I think. You mentioned uh, one of the use cases, uh, synthetic data, data generation. Yes. Um, big startup area in Silicon Valley seeing right now and, and in New York and other areas around the world is this idea of data augmentation yes. where you can't get access to the high quality data. Yes. You have to kind of simulate it or what is synthetic data? Explain the concept because it comes up a lot. <laughs> is it like just test data? Is it just something, I mean, what does it do? What, what is it, what does it do? Yeah, so for the, you know, from what um, I have, oh, through my experience, I've seen that for developers, the hardest, or the testers, the hardest part is creating, generating data to test without compromising uh, privacy, compliance, uh, all the regulatory uh, uh, compliance that we have to go through. Uh, so um, we know we have to mask the data, you know, make up data, that takes forever for the analyst and the testers. So synthetic data would be where you, um, train the model to be able to create similar like the name, first name, last name, contact information, um, I don't know, revenue, without it being the actual uh, data. So you mm -hmm. don't compromise on customer data, but you're feeding that like customer data that you can feed into the product so that they can test against it. All use cases, all edge cases can be covered. So you you're creating data synthetically, but really not using the live data that compromises uh, privacy and compliance. So an area I want to ch talk about, because this gets into kind of like where this is going. Without yes. the right data, yes. AI doesn't work well. Correct. We also see computes expensive. We just did a segment on that. Yes. Uh, and so you have also context window issues around yes. token in, first token in, what do you optimize for, throughput, and, all these. Yes. I mean, a whole nother level of analytics uh -huh. is emerging for the developer. Yes. Uh, even the notion of memory it's not just physical memory, yes. like in a systems context, but memory from a retrieval standpoint. Yes. If you got vector embeddings as an example. Yes. So this brings up the whole world of like, as a developer, these new analytics circuits, new observability kinds of things are emerging. Yes. What do you see as key markers for developers to look at as they put their toe in the water, yes. look for a platform, look for the picks and shovels, the tools to help them build apps. That's right, so I, I, I really truly, that's so uh, well said. I agree, I think developers, uh, they haven't thought about analytics for their world. At the most, observability would probably be the, 
the closest that they come to. Now they can do, uh, they can run insights around uh, if I, like, you know, uh, optimizing the code, the error handling, the, uh, uh, the different options that are available to them. They can pick and choose to design conversions, uh, like what will it look like from one programming language to the other, uh, orchestration of what comes first and next in terms of um, uh, the order of execution. They can also, as you said, compute, like understanding mm -hmm. like what that does into the performance of their code that they are going to generate. Uh, so those, and then also reusing, reusability of uh, mm -hmm. snippets of code, and then they can optimize uh, a lot of that design. Uh, reaching out to the libraries because a lot of times, you, you know, there is a lot of as a, uh, when the developers develop things, they often forget about where it is in the library. They can sometimes end up rebuilding all of that. So having access to those libraries, being able to use AI generation, AI tools to be able to get that information to your doorsteps, it's like amazing for them to be able to drive uh, time to value. The productivity angle is interesting because it's a whole other wave and still early. Um, people like to use innings. We love innings as a sport, but yes. you know, Amazon CEO calls it the three steps in a 10K race. I don't even think the game has started yet, yes. but <laughs> you look at the data, we're just talking about like the old school recommendation engines. Yes. You, to, you can't just add new stuff. You have to rebuild everything Re from scratch. Yes. Now you can kind of stream stuff in, don't yes. have to do batch. Yes. You got distributed okay. totally. concepts of data sets. Uh -huh. uh, you got lake houses, which are nice environments for serverless and other you know, abstracting compute away versus the old school data warehouses. So yes. the world is changing. The old yes. data warehouse world, yeah. databases, yes. notions are up in the air. It's up in the air. What's the big trend paradigm that's the biggest um, script flip or um, paradigm that's going to upset the apple cart, if you will, from the old school? Because you have old way and now you have this new, new way. way. What's the, what's the most important thing happening? I think the mo most important thing that in my mind is actionable insights. So earlier there were insights and then we had to kind of figure it out what actions we need to take. So it's a step further in the maturity level, the way the data has been presented. However, I would say that a lot of risks are there. There are biases, there is hallucination that we talk about. So uh, we need to really take into account the risk, oftentimes ourselves included because of security concerns. We usually turn off our configurations where we're saying, okay, we're going to use external data that's available to us, the white uh, uh, labeled data, but we're not going to train, let that model train on our data because then that's proprietary and stuff like that. So, uh, how or do or the you, weights we, could be different? Yes. How how do you create the balance between yeah. that and making sure that you know it's uh, and another thing I would really emphasize is as it's uh, expanding and growing, the creating the governance and center of excellence and that framework uh, to be able to allow to do all of that and um, you know, the balance between external data and our internal data, I think that is very going to be extremely critical in that uh, phase. The role of data is key. We see hallucinations, everyone sees that on ChatGPT and yes, OpenAI. All the time. Obviously it's proprietary large, of yes. course. Yes. Generic prompts create hallucinations, but if you prompt engineer properly and now create mm -hmm. prompt merges or yes. code, API yes. calls, you're starting to see an art and science. So yes. we see a trend where I'll call it an AI wrapper. Yeah. As a, tr as a as a as an app, that's not a bad thing. I used to be like, ah, oh, it's not a big trip, but actually, it could be compelling. Yes. Well, if yeah. you're just a developer, you want to wrap around OpenAI because it could be cheaper yes. to use their inference, for instance, than Absolutely. try to build your own. Yes. And that reminds me of the old website days because you just build a website on top of the the web, and then you, and yes. the web is now OpenAI oh. or Anthropic or yep. one of the large proprietary language yep. models. Yep. That's not a bad thing. Nope. I totally agree. So I personally uh, think, you know, um, even for the developers, their, um, their skill sets are going to change. There's going to be a lot of education there where they are going to figure out more orchestration between different AI solutions that are there. Uh, as I said, you know, figuring out when to use what, what human oversights, what kind of testing they need to do on top of what's been generated through AI. So I, gen I, I really think that that's the area that they're going to focus more on. That's where the, the, the bank for the buck would be for investing into our developers and engineers. And as you said, like the use cases that are there, at least for that we are using in our company, we've used cognitive search within the uh, company, we've used GitHub Copilot, we're using a lot of, uh, uh, like when I talk about uh, uh, cognitive search, we've done knowledge management around that. So I think education around that would be critical. Uh, the, uh, yeah, so as you said, the creating the development around AI uh, uh, 
skill sets would also be different. It's going to be developing on top of what you already have. An area that's coming up is integration uh, with development environments. Yes. Okay, so I'm a coder, I got my IDE, and all of a sudden I have to be context switched into another environment, may have different policies and rules. This actually was probably an untouchable area from a human standpoint because it's like the the indifference, I'd be too, ah, too much work. Yes. I can't do that, I can't, or I don't have the, the training. That is going this to be, cross coding. Yes. This is a really interesting part. Huge, yeah. So I think uh, with the Gen AI coming into a picture, uh, the, I, like the concept of ID is just going to expand beyond. So now you could do natural language conversion to code generation. So that a lot of uh, junior developers that coming in, they will have huge, huge assistance in being able to develop that. Um, you know, now, using, being used to a particular IDE or an environment, that'll go away because you, you can use the Gen AI and tools to be able to do that translation and bridging for you, for the developers. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, space to be in and that's a great opportunity. Like in the content market that we're in, we're in the media, we generate content. Dave yes. Vellante had a great quote on our Cube pod. He said, uh, ChatGPT makes a, a good writer great and a great writer exceptional. exceptional. Um, and developers, almost the same thing. You mentioned junior yes. developers because you know, I was just joking last night on the phone with some startup founders and we were, he's got a platform engineering, AI platform, and, and uh, I was riffing on the whole Mark Andreessen, 10X <laughs> developer. Back when the cloud, he said, hey, you get, you know, one good. developer works, does the work of 10, yeah. kind of the old school, full stack, waterfall based yes. developer, and then you got cloud, more agile, iterate, you know, the whole, yes. you know, lean startup kind of mentality. Yep. Now you got crafts coming back in here, so you have two factors going on I want to get your reaction to. One is, We've been saying there's a thousand, 10X goes to a hundred or thousand X developer because yes. AI can make that developer yes. even greater. Yes. But also this creative class brings craftsmanship to yes. the, the opportunity where old school software was very crafty. Yes. Slow, you had to do a lot of QA, shelfware sure. days, remember those yes. days? So now yes. we're seeing a lot more craft. Uh -huh. In fact, I was just talking with the CEO of Chrome, Chroma, and he's so proud that they have such a great developer uptake that they like his product. Oh, wow. That's a very craft okay. mindset yes. of yes. crafting good yes. pro for the personas you're trying to sell to or yes. build to. Talk about that. So. Yeah, so I think um, in terms of now that the, all the uh, grunt work, if you will, in the coding world, queuing, testing, tech debt, all of that is going to be taken care of with tools like uh, Gen, AI, Gen AI tools, I think the focus is going to be more on the experiences. Mm -hmm. So when I say craft, I, I feel like it's more around experiences, uh, wherever the digital touch points are, mobile experience mm -hmm. for the app, your experience on the web for the, the functionality. So thinking ahead of the consumers and the users, and then there is going to be almost instant conversion of the, the feedback that you get from the customers, whether in product or uh, uh, you know through the community, and you know, you'll be able to have that insight, the external instant insight from your consumers and the consumer behavior to be able to start yep. developing the product roadmap. So I think that problem solving, the experience craft is going to really boom in this area. So really focused on delivering uh, what the customers need and faster and you know, being able to think ahead of the- It's going to change the startup certainly and the go to markets. Yes. Because you can't, I mean, it's going to be really whoever does the best job will win. The and better mousetrap will be there. Exactly, I totally agree. So I think th that's why I'm thinking about some of the Gen AI tools that I'm seeing. Oh my God, like I, I'll give you my example. As a CDIO, we, we do a lot of access uh, uh, controls for all our enterprise software, our, including our own commercial software. So we're seeing Gen AI tools that are coming in that, that is going to automate who's accessing, what at what time, live. And I'm like, oh my God, this used to take months and yeah. uh, you know, and now it's on, the, on our, uh, literally in front of our screens when things, so it's very, uh, everything is very instant and live, and it's really helping with, uh, as I said, the experiences, the, the security posture and all of that, so I think it's going to be a huge. It's, it's a step function change to get to the application use case you want yes. to get to that required yeah. old school yes. manual Mental. labor building blocks or yes. undifferentiated heavy lifting or toil, whatever word you want to use. Exactly. That's really where the game changes. Yes, and what change, What another thing is, it brings in the external world insights to us. like. A Okay, you know what, this is what your competitors are doing, or this is where uh, the world is going. So 
bringing in those insights, which would take us a little longer to see once our product is on the market, mm -hmm. seeing how the response is and things like that. Now all that is getting accelerated. So, yeah. as you know, as you mentioned, it's becoming more of a craft. Chad, a great, great conversation. Certainly, we'll do a lot more conversations with you and really bring you in, unpack a lot of these topics. We're just scratching the surface. But is SuperCloud here and SuperCloud 4 with Gen AI, a lot of things we're touching upon is developer develop experience. One of the things that's clear in the radar is the notion of personalization. Because yes. if you get the data and you have the chatbots yes. and you got the co-pilot assistance yes. and you got predictive, uh -huh. the next level up is, is going to be customer. personalized yes. world. Absolutely right. So there I have an opinion I would share is, um, so it's extremely important to do it right. So jumping the gun on this kind of personalized, customized experience, uh, I believe is sometimes can hurt the company with commercial software. So extremely important to do it right and do it slow, uh, low hanging fruits where you know the things that have already been there like yeah. ChatGPT and stuff like that, or uh, you know uh, engagement through um, chat, uh, chat bots and things. It's extremely uh, beneficial, and I agree. And having a screen and personalized, even for salespeople, like we started thinking, okay, when a rep goes into, say, like Salesforce is doing, when they go into, uh, uh, you know, into their software, they are starting to figure out what's best for them. They bring in all the information, so they 360 degrees on their account to be able to make informed decisions ahead of time. So that is extremely critical uh, to making sure that when you think of personalization and customization, you do it right. Otherwise, it'll get frustration mm. uh, into customers and then they'll form yeah, a if it's not personalized, it yes. doesn't work. It doesn't it's work, like yes. like saying, hey, you want to do something personal yeah, for you. Yeah, you don't know me well it's, enough, so yes. <laughs> it's like, so, wow, you, yeah. you didn't read the room, yes, so exactly. to speak. Yes. It's a blind spot. Yep, agreed. Well, we appreciate it. What, what's your role at Amplitude? Put the commercial in for Amplitude. We really appreciate you contributing to our program here. Sure. What are you guys looking to do? What are some of the things that you're working on that you're excited about? Sure, uh, so I'm the Chief Digital and Information Officer at uh, Amplitude, so my role is um, making sure we drive um, data-driven culture, use, you know, eating our own dog food, uh, and so we, uh, Amplitude is, uh, you know, we build a platform and we power people's products so that they can, um, um, you know, ex 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 build exceptional experiences for their uh, customers and provide uh, product-related insights. Uh, so uh, my role is to be able to uh, drive that employee experience, you, you know, building the corporate technology so we can, um, have uh, our enable our business to do to run their company, including our, um, our including a product organization and engineering organization, so they can deliver the best in class product and services for our customers. Congratulations on your success. We've been following your company since you guys were on our startup showcase, our Amazon Web Services yes. startup showcase. I think it was yep. season one, episode yep. one. You guys might have been on. Yep. And now public company. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. This Thank is SuperCloud 4, Generative AI, the impact to the industry. Mainly it's driven by developers. A tsunami of new developers, a new generational shift is happening. You're going to see developers looking for those picks and shovels, so to speak, to build those apps. The infrastructure, it's all going to change. And it is legit, next level. We're covering it here on theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>